What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. I'm starting a new series because I think this is important. People seem to have a lot of interest in the medication breakdowns and a little bit of a discussion about the most commonly prescribed medications in psychiatry. So I looked it up and I wanted to go through all of the most commonly prescribed medications that I haven't talked about yet and why they might be of interest and what are the mechanisms, what are the benefits, what are the risks of these medications. We'll make these really short videos. So I'm going to start out with Alprazolam, also known as Xanax, and that is approved for GAD as well as panic disorder. Now I've talked about this in previous videos on benzodiazepines. It's a fast-acting medication that's effective for both generalized anxiety disorder and panic disorder. Its short half-life is part of the problem and part of the risk for side effects. So with the short half-life, what you get is a rapid onset of action, but it's more likely to cause withdrawal, because, and that's why with this medication you have to take it multiple times a day. It does not last as long as some of the other ones. So short half-life, increased risk for withdrawal symptoms, as well as the increased risk for addiction, right, because you have to take it more often. There is an immediate release and an extended release formulation. So there is an extended release that has a slightly longer half-life or, or is released slowly over time. So that can be used in place, but there's better options in my opinion if you're choosing to use a benzodiazepine. For GAD, what are you going to do? You're going to start the dose very, very low actually. About 0.25 to 0.5 milligrams three times a day. And remember, because of that short half-life, you got to take it multiple times a day which can make it complicated for patients. Like I said, I can't remember to take something once a day, so I imagine for my patients it's very difficult to take something two to three times per day. Now, you can increase by 0.25 to 0.5 milligrams per day as needed and tolerated every three to four days. So you can increase this every three to four days, and you're gonna want to shoot for a maximum dose here of four milligrams per day and that would be in divided doses. So that's the maximum amount you could choose. You could use for a day in generalized anxiety disorders, four milligrams. Most people probably won't need that much, but again, that's the max. For panic disorder, it's slightly different, but very, very similar. You're looking at 0.5 milligrams per day, three times per day, and you're gonna increase by no more than one milligram per day every three to four days as needed to a target dose of somewhere between four and six milligrams in divided doses. Again, it always has to be in divided doses if you're not using an extended release formulation. The max dose for a panic disorder is a little bit higher. That's going to be 10 milligrams per day. Now, I've talked about in previous videos the mechanism of action. It's the same for all of these medications. It binds the GABA-A receptors and enhances the effect of the major inhibitory neurotransmitter, GABA. You want to avoid using this combination with things like sedatives, other sedatives, and or alcohol. You also want to avoid benzodiazepines and opioids because this can increase your risk for respiratory depression, which could lead to death. So we want to avoid alcohol, avoid opioids, and obviously avoid combining this with other benzodiazepines or barbiturates, etc. Okay? Benzodiazepines are very effective because they work immediately. And I've said this before, like if you have generalized anxiety disorder, if you have panic disorder, you know, this is a very, very effective way to get immediate relief of the physical symptoms of anxiety. However, the, the goal here is that we want to eventually get the person on a safer, less addictive potential medication, less risk for withdrawal medication, like a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, though, like I've said, in previous videos takes four to six weeks to start working. So if the person needs immediate relief, that's where these type of medications come into play for short-term use with the goal of bridging to the serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Now, you can see what we call paradoxical effects. This is supposed to reduce anxiety, re reduce the risk for agitation. However, in especially elderly populations, sometimes we use these medications and what we find is that they become more aggressive patient becomes more aggressive and more agitated. So you wanna watch out for, the, for that paradoxical effect, especially in older populations and anybody who has what we call a traumatic brain injury. So watch out for that paradoxical effect. If used appropriately, 
there actually should be no reason why a person needs to increase their dose or take more than what's recommended by their physician. It usually works very well, and again, if it's adequately and properly dosed, the person will have you know good success with it. With that said, I'm going to cut the video there. If you guys have questions or comments about Alprazolam or Xanax, I'm happy to answer them below, so drop the comments. And also, please like and subscribe to the channel so we can continue making videos like this.